Welcome to Harbor Park CrossFit's functional movement series. We're going to be going over some functional movement screenings that we will do with new clients. This will be the active straight leg raise. What I'm looking for here is mobility in his hamstrings and any limiting factors that would prevent him from full range of motion. So I'm going to have Jason lay down on his back. I'm going to adjust the board so it's underneath his knees. Jason, I want you to raise your left leg straight up, trying not to keep a bend. And in this test, he's demonstrated that he's able to keep a straight leg past the 90 degree angle. And I would score him proficient in that test uh, on a scale from 1 to 5. I will now test his right leg to make sure that it's even on both sides. He's also demonstrated that that is a proficient test. Welcome back. This is test number two in the functional movement screening. It's a shoulder mobility test that I'm going to do with Jason. There's several points of performance that I'm going to be looking for. We can work off of a box or on the wall. Today we'll be using the box. Jason will have his feet flat on this box. I'm then looking for a 90 degree angle in his knee and his hips. I'm looking to make sure that those hips are flat on the floor at this position and he has a flat back. This indicates to me that his hips don't cause a problem for range of motion. If he were to come off the floor or have any type of curvature in the spine in this position, I would know that there's a problem in his hips and that we can work with that through mobility. He would probably generally show problems in the squat most likely an overhead squat is where he would suffer in this position. So, the next part of this test is I'm going to have Jason place his hands overhead and I want his thumbs to touch the floor behind him. If he's unable to touch the floor with his thumbs, that would indicate to me that he has some type of shoulder range of motion issues and we'd have to fix that with mobility. Generally that would be tight lats, tight traps, um, chest even. We would work with that again through mobility. But Jason has the full range of motion to go overhead. So I feel confident in this test here. I'm also now looking to make sure that my hand does not fit in any gaps underneath his spine. It should be laying flat on the floor here. No curvature in that spine. If he were to have any curvature in the spine, again, that would indicate to me that there is some type of mobility or range of motion concern, most likely in the lats, uh, T-spine, and we would work again through that through mobility. I'm satisfied with what he's shown here, so he passes this test. Now I'm going to have him bring his hands back down to the floor onto his side. And again, I'm watching to make sure there's no curvature as he moves through the range of motion. Welcome back. This is going to be our test number three, which is going to work on more shoulder mobility, bicep, and chest mobility. I'm going to measure Jason's hand first from the wrist to the fingertips which is roughly eight inches. Now Jason, I'm going to turn for the camera here. I want you to go overhead with your right hand and touch your back, and I want you to come underneath, try to touch fingertips if you can. I'm then going to measure the distance between the fingertips, which I'm roughly getting two inches. Now Jason, I want you to do the other side, left over, right under. And here Jason's able to touch almost fingertips with about an inch in between. There's a slight deviation from side to side, but what I'm looking for is anything that's going to be greater than that 8 inches that I previously mentioned. But he's within the acceptable range of motion here. So it demonstrates to me that he has no pec, bicep, or uh, shoulder range of motion problems. Now I'm going to show you a test with somebody who has some tight pecs and biceps. Corian's hand measures roughly six inches. Corian, I want you to go overhead with your left hand, under with your right. Great <clears throat> measure now, which is over 10 inches between the two, which demonstrates to me here that she has a tight pec 
the shoulder issue, but with the other hand now. A little bit better, she's a little closer here, but there's still a deviation in the hand, so there's a bigger gap here, which still shows me some range of motion problems in her shoulders and pec. It's generally going to be a pec issue, so we'll work with that with uh, mobility. <laughs> Welcome back to our functional movement screening. This is test four. What we're going to look for in this test is core stability. We're going to do a couple different variations on plank and back extension, and then based on how long he's able to hold those movements, it's going to help us understand where he might be deficient in his core stability. Core stability is going to encompass the front sides and our back. So the first test that I'm going to have him do is I'm going to have him do a left side plank. So he's going to bring his arm and get his elbow underneath his shoulder, his leg straight out, and he's going to lift off the ground. He wants to maintain this solid plank position for as long as possible. I want his feet over top of each other, and once he starts to dip down and lose that solid, it would be the end of the test, and I would count the time that that took. The next one I'm going to have him do is flip over, and he's going to do a right side plank. Elbows underneath his shoulders, feet on top of each other, and he's going to lift up and hold this side for as long as he possibly can. Once again, as soon as he starts to dip and loses his solid plank, the, end, the test would be ended, and we would write down how many seconds that was. The next one, I'm going to have him sit with his feet flat on the ground and hip width apart. I'm going to have him cross his hands over his chest and maintain a nice straight back. I'm going to use my PVC pipe here, and I'm going to have him lean into it, and I'm going to bring him back to a solid degree that's going to engage his abs, and then I'm going to tell him to go and remove that PVC pipe. He's going to hold that for as long as he can, and I'm going to record the seconds that it takes. As soon as he starts to lose that posture and can't hold it anymore, and falls back or his feet come off the ground, he would end the test at that. So the last part of our test is going to be on the GHD machine with a back extension. I'm going to have Jason get in the machine and I want him set up to hold his feet with his hips right on the outside of the cushion. I'm going to have him cross his arms over his chest or on his chest and he's going to maintain a parallel position usually using his back extension to hold himself up. He's going to hold that for as long as he can. As soon as he starts to lose parallel and go below his hips, we would end the test at that point. So with all four of these different plank styles, we're going to use them to understand any variances. I'm going to just divide the amount of time that he spent on his left plank to his right plank. If they're outside a certain degree, then I know that his core stability is uneven and we have to work on his outer core. If his front plank to back plank is uneven, that's going to show me any deficiencies he has in ab strength or in most likely in his back extension and his strength of his back. And we're also going to use the side plank to his back. And these are going to help us understand if someone can brace properly for heavy loads and be able to maintain weight. This is test number five. It's a trunk stability push-up. This is testing Jason's core stability along with shoulder stability. I'm going to have Jason start off by placing his hands out at a 90 degree angles, and I want his hands to be in line with his forehead. What I'm going to have Jason do is go up into a push-up position, engage his core, squeeze his back, and I'm looking for shoulders and hips to rise together, and then he can go back down in slow control with fashion. If Jason were not able to push up from this position, I could, I, that would be a core strength or a lower back issue, possibly even a shoulder strength. So I would have him lower his hands down can start at the chin level and work all the way down to shoulder level until he's able to do the test in a slow and controlled fashion, shoulder and hip rising together. Welcome back. This is test number six of our functional movement screen. This is called the inline lunge test. This is going to show Jason's ability to lunge while keeping an upright torso. To begin the test, I'm going to take my measurement stick and I'm going to measure from the top of his knee to his belt line, which I get a length of about 18 inches. 
I'm going to have Jason step on the board. It's pre-measured out within inches here. And he's going to actually hold this PVC pipe behind his back in this test. And I want the PVC pipe to be in contact with his back the entire test. He's going to place his heel on the 18 inch mark. And then his other foot will be toes on the start line. He will then lunge down, touch his knee to the board. Good. And now I want you to switch feet. Good. I noticed no chest drop. The PVC was in contact with his back the entire time and he was able to stay in line and touch his knee and didn't lose his balance. That there demonstrates that he doesn't have tight hips or adductors and he's able to do that. If somebody were to lose balance on the board and come off completely, we would give them three chances to be able to complete the test. And if they were to completely fall off or not be able to complete the test as we did instructed, that would lead me to believe that there is some type of hip, quad, or adductor, hamstring issue and we can fix that with mobility. This is test number seven of the functional movement screening. It's called the hurdle step. I'm going to have the board placed in front of the rig, and then I'm going to have a bungee cord that goes across and stretches from rig to the base of the rig here. The height of the bungee cord is going to be at the kneecaps of the athlete. I'm then going to have Jason place his toes against the board and he's going to put this PVC pipe across his back in the position as he would of a normal back squat. I'm then going to have Jason raise his right leg up. I'm looking for straight up and he's going to go over the hurdle and then touch his heel to the floor and then back over and then down. And then I'm going to have him do the same thing with his left. Good. And what I'm looking for is several things. The PVC pipe isn't turning. That talks again about core strength and stability, which it did not in this test. The other I'm looking for is no variance in the hip, that the knees both rose and tracked evenly, uh, that if one did not or one flared out in any particular direction, that would signify a IT band issue. It could be a hip flexor issue, and it could be even tightness in the quad. And those are the differences that I'm looking for in this test. This is step number eight of the functional movement screening. It is the air squat test. I'm going to have set Jason up here. He's going to put his feet just outside his hip. I'm going to have his point his toes slightly out. And now there's going to be several points of performance that I'm going to be looking for here. I want to make sure that the chest doesn't cave when he squats, and I'm looking for a neutral spot. I'm also looking to make sure that his hips go below parallel, which is below the knees, that his knees are tracking outward over his toes and they're not caving in, and he's, again, able to keep the upright chest through the entire movement. Jason, please demonstrate. Good. And then up. I'm also looking for at the bottom here to make sure that his heels are flat on the ground and he's not coming forward up on his toes. This is test number nine of the functional movement screening. It's the overhead squat test. Since Jason was able to demonstrate the air squat test, I will move on to this test. If, however, if he was not able to pass the points of performance on the air squat, I would not go on to this test. So in this test, I'm going to have him in the same setup as the air squat, except this time we're going to have a PVC pipe overhead. I want him to lock the bar back towards the rear plane of his body. I'm looking for elbows to make sure they're completely locked out at the top. I'm looking for chest to be horizontal and neutral spine. Same points of performance in the air squat. I don't want the chest to fall forward and I want hips to go below parallel with maintaining contact with the heels on the floor through the entire time. And there's no bend in the elbows as he does this test. Good. The PVC pipe didn't go past 
the horizontal plane, it stayed in one plane of his body, more towards the rear, which is what I'm looking for. His chest did not dramatically fall forward. He had a neutral spine. If he were to fall forward in the chest, or if the bar would come forward past the horizontal plane, that would signify to me that Jason has a concern in his shoulders, lats, chest area, which we would have already probably seen in the previous tests. Those issues can be corrected with some strength building and mobility. We will address those on a case-by-case -case basis.